Um, so what I'll do is I'll st get started. Uh, everyone else, feel free to please introduce yourself on the chat, uh, post your LinkedIn, uh, uh, LinkedIn URL so that you can connect with each other, we can connect with you. I think that's one of the purposes of workshops and uh, webinars like this. Um, I'll start with a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, I'm very glad to have with me here my partner, Renshi, uh, who manages our governance, risk and compliance vertical, a couple of my colleagues, as well as uh, Zed, who's, uh, you know, besides being a participant in our ecosystem, and I'll talk about our ecosystem a bit, also manages accounts and finance for us, which is just so amazing. So um, he's, a, he's a good partner and uh, now a good friend. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this session. Uh, Consolidon, uh, very briefly, is a new age consulting firm. Uh, new age because, uh, you know, our partners, we understand the client's requirements, but we don't like, unlike in a traditional consulting firm, where there are consultants who go and deliver the projects. In our case, we always have uh, partner firms, boutique consulting firms normally, that go in and deliver those projects on our behalf or we connect them directly with clients. So it's a very different model for a consulting firm. We've been around for the last four years, delivered more than 250 consulting projects over the GCC region. Uh, you know, our model uh, allows us to scale very quickly, right? Because, um, so just, uh, you know, let's talk very briefly about the summit, what you expect during this webinar, and then I'll hand over to uh, Zed. Um, so, you know, what we decided uh, last year, uh, you know, because 2020, everyone was expecting it to be a great year. Uh, it obviously didn't turn out like that. You know, it was the turn of a new decade, uh, had a lot of promise, but, you know, come March, April, once the lockdown started, it became clearer that it's not going to be a very good year. Um, we turned our attention after the initial shock because obviously every company, like, like every other company, we were we had an initial shock in March and April, but then we decided that we're going to use the excess capacity that we had, the extra time that we had, and we're going to be spending 20% of our time on initiatives which can help the economy get back on track to do our part. Uh, in 2020, we focused on helping small businesses and, and micro businesses because they're the ones who suffered the most. It was a project called the Superheroes Project. Um, and then in 2021, this year, we decided that why not also try and help the larger companies who need this kind of support at this point. Um, so we got together with about 70 of the boutique consulting firms in our ecosystem. So we have about 300 boutique firms in the ecosystem that we do projects with. With about 70 of them, we decided we're going to host this summit called the Connected Insights Web Summit. Um, and in this summit, we're having about 50 panel discussions and webinars and about six workshops in the evenings. Um, so uh, thank you so much for being part of this first edition of this summit. Uh, there are two uh, quick things I want to say before we go ahead. One is if you want to ask any questions during the summit, uh, sorry, during the webinar, uh, feel free to just raise your hand. There's a raise hands feature on Zoom, so please use that. Uh, all of us are very familiar with Zoom now. Maybe we weren't one year back. I I hardly ever use Zoom more than one year back, right? Uh, so uh, please feel free to use that feature. Or if you're on video, we've sort of added you in as panelists so that you can actually share your video. You can raise your actual hand and ask a question as well. Feel free to do that. Uh, the second thing is look out for some giveaways, right? So during this uh, uh, session on the chat, there are some giveaways, right? The first giveaway is uh, to be a part of the superheroes project that I talked about. The second giveaway, which we'll give after about 15 or 20 minutes, is uh, the opportunity to attend one of our workshops. You know, there are about five more paid workshops remaining in this webinar, uh, in this web summit. Uh, we normally charge $299 in this workshop. Uh, in fact, Zed is hosting one on Lean Six Sigma next week. Um, so what we're doing is uh, for three people who are attending today, uh, you can attend for free if you complete that form and tell us how it will benefit your organization. So feel free to complete that form um, and we'll send you an invite. 
And finally, uh, you know, we, we're looking for speakers for the next edition of our web summit, uh, which will be in May. So we'll send you a form at around 45 minutes into the into the webinar. Uh, feel free to um, you know fill that form and uh, come in as a speaker in our next uh, edition of the summit. Uh, that's about it for me. We'll do a photo in the end. So uh, towards the end of this uh, uh, webinar, we'll uh, ask you to switch on your videos and do a quick photo uh, for memory uh, and for social media, more importantly as well. Um, so I'd love uh, love it if you participate in that. Uh, that's about it from me, I promise. Uh, over to you, Zed. Uh, sorry for taking a little bit longer than I promised. Zed? Oh, that's surprising. It was working just now. Can everyone else hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We did a I quick... Rejoining me. Sure, no problem. We did a quick test before the uh, webinar uh, just to make sure everything is working. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is how technology is. Uh, hi, Zed. Can you hear us now? We still can't hear him. Yeah, he uh, sent me a message saying he's going to rejoin. So. Give him one minute. Until then, is there anyone else who'd like to share, uh, you know, who you are, where you're joining from, what you think, uh, you know, you'd like to achieve uh, during this summit? Maybe Farwa, if you don't mind. Uh, Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. This is uh, Farooq Shahzad, Farooq Shahzad from uh, Islamabad. And I'm an uh, oil and gas uh, E&T business uh, in, uh, working in finance department and uh, deputy GM finance. And I have over uh, uh, like 20 years experience in oil and gas sector. So we are very much concerned about uh, performance of our assets. So we, we are uh, having a very keen eye on that, their performance, uh, not only uh, the uh, performance of the asset as a whole, but also the performance of each and every individual. And uh, uh, we are uh, very much concerned about the performance and how to measure it and how to uh, uh, improve the performances. So this will uh, help me a lot. I, I would gain a lot of uh, uh, new things or knowledge from this workshop. Inshallah. And, and, and just to add to that, you know what Farooq said about, uh, uh, when you asked about uh, what we are expecting from this webinar, I would like yeah. to add that the world has changed a lot in the last one year. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. just to look at how the performance measurements have also evolved and what, what is okay. the management right now expecting uh, mm -hmm. on these expectations. So. Okay, that's Agreed, agreed. Zishan, I can see you're back now, but can you try speaking? No? Yes. Ah, good to have you back. So Zishan, because we can hear you, so you can just go ahead. Uh, Kanika, can you give Zishan a call? Just help him out uh, because we can hear him. Uh, he just needs to know that, you know, we can hear. And then I don't mind doing his presentation. He showed it to me right before and I uh, I know a little bit definitely about balance scorecard and performance management systems and especially to Farooq's point, right? Being a CEO myself, I've seen how performance uh, management systems have changed over the last uh, 
one year, it was a completely different scenario, right? Before COVID, right? You know, uh, imagine it from this perspective, right? Uh, everyone went through a crisis in April and May and June, right? Everybody was going through a personal crisis. Organizations were going through a personal crisis. Was it the best time to measure performance in the same way as you would measure before COVID? Perhaps not. We made a lot of changes to how we measure performance at Consolidon uh, after uh, after a few months after COVID as well. Uh, you know, focused much more on uh, people uh, following processes, people uh, showing up in a discipline uh, in a disciplined manner, uh, etc. Rather than just on results, 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 right? Because that couldn't necessarily work after COVID. And even if it's bad for the company, to be honest, right? Um, so I'm happy to talk through that if he likes, but uh, just let's see if he can join. Until we are waiting anyway, does anybody else want to share their thoughts? Uh, you know, maybe we can hear about what you're doing in your company uh, to measure performance already. Thank you. Hi, hi, Maru. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, here uh, Dinat here from Sri Lanka. So we uh, we got to know about your session from uh, Harim, from your team. Yeah, so uh, from my perspective, I just want to know like uh, we was a startup where uh, it's three years now, and uh, most of the uh, team members in our startup is uh, mostly below twenty five. So most are uh, generation generation C, where all all, the, all everyone is young, and we are a tech company. And uh, so I think uh, mostly the crew is purpose driven, and uh, they uh, they 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 want some to do some impact or something kind some kind of stuff. So in that scenarios that uh, measuring how how uh, how we can. Uh, mission performance in terms of that aspects also if you can mention those as well like uh, you you mean uh, we, we generally speak about all the uh, big companies and also if you can consider those uh, segments also it will i think uh, it, it will be really helpful for me okay and can i ask you what uh, industry uh, you said it right so is it yeah. IT development software development yeah, software developer. Okay. Very clear. Hi, this is Raza. Hi, Raza. How are you? How are you? Sorry, first of all, sorry I joined in late. Probably very late. But. Um, it's flopping. Good to see that. Okay, I am back. Uh, somehow, if I, uh, as soon as I st uh, start sharing my screen and move the video around, it loses the uh, sound. So I'm going to keep my video up and uh, share the screen. Hopefully, now everybody can see the screen. Yes, sir. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so we'll start the session without any further uh, delay. Uh, we're going to be the session is going to be about performance measurement systems and how we can use this to improve the profitability for your companies. And before we start the session, just a brief introduction about uh, myself. My name is Zaid Bin Zishtan. I'm the CEO of Inclusive Consulting. Uh, by qualifications, I'm a certified public accountant and certified information systems auditor, chartered global management accountant. And I have also have a certified Six Sigma Green Belt. I have uh, 20 years of experience in accounting, finance, auditing, taxation, and consultancy with a wide range of industries like uh, manufacturing, consumer goods, commodity trading, prof uh, professional services, logistics and distribution, education, healthcare sector. And what that does for me is that having that variety of experience in multiple industries gives me the ability to know and identify the best practices in different industries and apply them across the board. And also 
with that variety of experience allows me to help companies develop performance measurement systems across multiple departments not just in finance accounting and auditing but also looking at operations looking at sales and marketing looking at uh, supply chain uh, plant operations and things like that uh, so i use this uh, uh, extensive exposure that i have had so far in the past 20 20 uh, 21 years across different uh, geographical locations like us middle east and south asia where i work in multiple different industries and use this to come up with very valuable solutions for the clients that we work with and hopefully that is what i will be able to deliver in today's session as well that uh, all of you are coming from different backgrounds in different industry different departments and we will be able to show you and demonstrate to you that how this performance me measurement system is not restricted to a particular range of departments or functional areas it can be applied applied across the board I started my career in the US uh, where I graduated from, uh, did my professional qualifications from there as well. I spent about six years over there in the US working with uh, Baker Tilly and Deloitte, Big Fork Farm. Uh, then I moved to Pakistan to be with my parents, being the only son. I worked in the Engro group of companies, which is the largest private sector conglomerate uh, over there. And I worked in multiple diff different business sectors with them. Uh, I worked in their uh, holding uh, corporate office and their manufacturing business. I also worked at one of their plant site. I also worked in their internal audit, accounting, finance, and various departments. I served as head of finance and CFO, head of finance for their consumer goods business, and CFO of their commodity trading and uh, rice manufacturing business. I'm a member of uh, multiple globally recognized professional organizations. So that's my professional background. Uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, about performance measurement systems, why they are necessary if you really want to improve that profitability for your company. And stay ahead of the competition as well. So we will be talking about that. And like Varun already mentioned in the introduction, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, use the raise hand feature and uh, also put in your questions in your chat box. Uh, we will be having a Q&A session at the end of the uh, last 15 minutes of the session as well. Peter Drucker is considered as one of the greatest management consultants uh, in recent times. And one of his fa uh, famous sayings is that you cannot manage what you don't measure. Uh, if you really want to improve something, you have to first start measuring it. And then only you will know where is the gap of improvement and how long is the journey to go. So as an extension of that, how does that impact our profitability? So if you extend that, if you don't measure, you cannot manage. So that's the Peter Drucker quote. But if you cannot manage something, that means you cannot control it either. And if you cannot control it, then you cannot really improve it. And that is where you start losing money. You start losing your customers, you start losing your revenue, and you start losing your competitive advantage if you cannot be on a journey of continuous improvement. So that is the link of the performance measurement system to the profitability aspect. And we will be talking about that a little bit more in detail and very specific aspects as well in a couple of slides. So a good performance measurement system, the real objective of that performance measurement system is that it should be able to proactively measure and promote a system of continuous improvement so that you're always staying ahead of the competition, you're always on top of your financial targets and you're always improving your profitability. So the idea is to have a clear focus on effectiveness, a direction towards the future, which makes sure that you are successfully able to achieve your strategic objectives. That's the idea behind a robust performance measurement system. Now, traditionally, what most of the companies have done, they have used the financial statements as a source of measuring performance. So for example, they've got a balance sheet, cash flow statement and profit and loss statement. So in balance sheet, if you've got net assets, which is the assets minus liabilities, if you've got a positive number there, that was considered to be good. Similarly, if you have a cash flow, positive cash flow, that's good. And if you've got in your profit and loss, you've got a profitability targets met, that means that the performance is good. Now, the problem with that is that that's very limited information in two ways. The first way is that it is only reflecting on the past performance. You only get to know this after the fact. So this actually becomes only a lagging indicator. So financial statements are prepared usually after the uh, accounting close of this uh, transactions. And then 
very few companies have such a robust financial statement closing function that within the first week of the month end close, you will have all the financial statements ready for you. So even if you have that, that means that is telling you the information that of what you have already achieved in the past. It is not telling you what you will be achieving in the future or where is the road ahead or how are you performing towards your strategic objectives. Similarly, it does not tell you anything about the future economic value that you are generating. So for example, one of the biggest assets of any company, now we know after going through multiple years and if you talk to any consultant, the biggest asset of a company is its people. And people are not measured anywhere in the financial statements. Their performance is not measured anywhere in the financial statements. So it, that is your real economic asset that you are generating in your company. So this becomes a very limited way to measure your performance. Now, how do, can you move to a system which can measure not just the financial targets, but can tell you something towards the future as well? So that is where you have KPIs and balance scorecard based system, wherein you have the key performance indicators. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. And you have a balanced scorecard system, which means that you have got these four key categories that you look into and make sure that whatever performance indicators you create, they capture all of these four categories. For example, there is a financial target, there is a financial system. So there are KPIs that address your financial uh, value. There are KPIs that address the customer aspect. So we all know that without the customer, without the customer satisfaction, without the customer focus, you will very quickly start losing your revenue number and you cannot grow. So the customer focus needs to be there. Then how do you deliver a value to your customer is through your internal processes. So the business process aspects needs to be captured. And then the last but not the least is the organization learning and growth. You can call it learning and growth. You can call it innovation. Some people call it development and some people call it simply as people. So the people aspect of it, you need to continuously improve and invest on your people and the learning and the innovation and growth as well to be able to make sure that the future targets that you want to achieve, you'll actually be able to achieve those. Now, for any company, just a little bit of a background as to why we talk about KPI and what part do they really address? You've got the board level and the CEO and the president who actually come up with the vision and mission of the organization as a whole. This is what they want to see the company become. Now the CEO's directive and the uh, top executive directive are, is to come up with a strategy which is aligned with that vision mission statement. And then your uh, executives with the H, uh, head of departments come up with a set of targets and objectives that they want to achieve to be able to achieve the strategy. Now, in order to achieve those objectives, you've got this whole bulk of the organization in the middle management and the, and the employees there are only two ways they can try to achieve those yearly objectives or even the short-term objectives. Either you have new initiatives, you have special projects or new ideas. That's one way. Or you have your internal existing, existing processes, existing systems, existing customers. Now, just let's just do a quick poll. Use the chat feature and Put in your input as to what do you think is more in terms of volume of activity, volume of transactions in any company? Would you have more new projects or you have more existing processes in this company? So I'll just give you a couple of uh, uh, just about 30 seconds to put in your input in the chat box and give the answer of what do you think is more in terms of volume is it new projects and uh, new initiatives or is it existing processes? Okay, so we are having a mix of views, uh, almost as for 60, 40, 60% 60 people are saying that uh, it's more processes 
and 42 percent we've got a mix and we've got sometimes more projects depending upon the life cycle so yes majority of the companies would have more existing processes that they need to manage versus more new projects and that is where the kpi system focuses on because you have got more processes that need to be managed therefore they will have the biggest impact on the company let's take a look at it in another way if you've got two things to be able to be successful in the business you need to have a strategy and you need to have the processes to deliver that strategy for the business now the, this quadrant is easy if you've got the right strategy and if you've got the efficient processes you're going to be successful this quadrant is also very easy because if you've got the wrong strategy and if you've got poor and inefficient processes you're going to fail immediately in the short term the tricky part happens in these two quadrants if you have the right strategy but inefficient processes you may have some short term success but you're going to fail in the long term similarly if you've got the wrong strategy but even if you have the best processes you may have some short term success but you will have eventual failure in the long term as well so how do you tackle these two we already talked about in the previous slide that it is the ceo and the top executives that are involved in setting the strategy and it is the middle management and the rest of the employees who are involved in conducting day to day processes so if you have to fix something that means that if you have to fix a strategy wrong if there is a wrong strategy and if you have to fix it there are only a few handful of people which is the ceo and the senior executive that need to get together and change the strategy come up with a different strategy to try something different but if you have got inefficient processes and you have to fix that that means you have to deal with a lot of different people you have to train them you have to coach them you have to fix the process and the impact is on many 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 people so therefore it is much harder to fix an inefficient process rather than to fix the wrong strategy so therefore that is why it is so important that you have a robust system that can help you manage a lot of these processes and make sure that you have got efficient processes and that is why the kpis and balance scorecard system focuses on managing and measuring these process side so how do they do it in kpis like we talked about earlier it's all about profitability the bottom line there are only two ways you can impact your bottom line either you can improve your revenue or you can reduce your cost the way you improve your revenue is you're actually delivering a value to your customer that they are willing to pay for and the way you become improve your cost is that you deliver that value in some in a way that is very cost efficient these are the only two ways that you can do it now if you want to have a good kpi system that would make sure that you cover all the processes that affect both sides of the equation if you are able to deliver good value and you are able to do it in a very cost efficient way that will help you improve your bottom line and that is where the kpis come in it is a metric system that can tell you how effective your processes are in delivering that value and at what cost and are they being cost efficient and that is how you impact it directly on profitability we actually helped one of our clients in uh, developing a kpi based uh, monitoring system for their entire service area function and the uh, value impact was 3 million dirham in the very first year of if proper implementation of the kpi in measuring a monitoring system and in the second year it was 4 million so in total within 2 years it was a 7 million dirham impact on their bottom line not the its net of cost okay now uh, like we talked about there are so many processes in the company there's so many uh, internal processes that happen should you measure everything no and that is why it is said key performance indicators so the first part of it is key so it means that you are actually measuring what really matters the most something that you know is extremely critical for this functional area this is the most important aspect of it and that is what you want to focus on so it's not about developing a whole list of 15 20 30 35 kpis it's about developing those key parameters only which matters the most where you want to focus the most the next aspect is performance this is where you are looking for that actual output or the result 
that fits in with your strategic objectives. The last aspect, which a lot of times people miss upon is the indicator. What that means is that whatever you are measuring in terms of performance, you need to make sure it is measurable as well. It is something that can be quantified. Now there could be qualitative measures and there could be quantitative measures as long as it, it is measurable. And towards the, uh, after a few slides, we will show you a little tip that you can use to help you make sure that whatever KPI you come up with, it is something measurable and you can quantify that as well. Now, just developing those KPIs is not the end story. It's not going to result into the profitability improvement. It's a process, it's a continuous process. So what you need to do is the first step is you need to define the right KPIs. The KPIs that cover all the balance scorecard categories, they cover the value delivery to your customers and they deliver, they capture the cost efficiency aspect as well. So you develop the KPIs around value, cost, your inputs and the outputs. Then once you have developed the KPIs, you need to track them, you need to record them, monitor them and analyze them. So you create a scorecard system and we'll show you an example of that. And you record that and continuously monitor that performance and see how it is going. So whatever is meeting the expected targets and performance levels, you manage that. Whatever is not meeting your expected targets and performance level, you need to start improving that. How do you do that? So once you have developed your KPIs, you can start tracking them by developing dashboards. Once you've got the dashboards developed, you start tracking them, you've got the trend analysis, you can analyze them and see, okay, the ones which are being able to come up to the target and expected performance level, you can manage them by developing policies, SOPs and procedures and software and using technology around that to manage it, to make sure it remains that way in a sustainable manner. So you can sustain that improvement in the process or the performance of that process, which is meeting your targets. Now, the aspects which are not meeting your expected targets or performance levels, those are the KPIs that you need to improve upon. One of the ways you can improve upon them is by using a Six Sigma methodology, which is a very structured data-driven methodology to help with the continuous improvement and uh, making sure that the improvements are not just one time, they are sustainable improvements as well. So since Six Sigma is a data-driven methodology, one of the advantages of developing KPIs and having dashboards and data is that that data can then feed into Six Sigma methodology and help you come up with the process improvement ideas as well. Uh, as Varun mentioned, uh, one of the uh, workshops that I would be conducting in uh, a couple of weeks would be on Lean Six Sigma. And if you are interested in that, please, please feel free to sign up for that. And over there, we will be discussing the Six Sigma methodology and a couple of very useful tools that you can use to help you improve and come up with some creative solutions on the, on the areas that you identify as the KPIs that need to be improved. Now, as far as possible, your KPIs should be smart. So smart means they need to be very, very specific. You should know what you are measuring. They need to be measurable. They need to be achievable. They need to be relevant to your strategic objective and they need to be time bound. And again, the idea is not to go for volume and have a lot of KPIs. The target is to have the key performance indicators only, the few KPIs that you really want to focus on and that matter the most for your business or the functional area. However, there's a word of caution with that. Don't get too smart with it because a couple of things, what we have seen is that the past performance or past experience is not always the only indicator of what can be achievable. Some, you can, so feel free to have some stretch targets, extend your imagination and innovation and creativity aspect when you are come on, coming up with the targets or the achievability aspect of it. Similarly, in terms of time bound, good ideas do take time to develop. So give yourself time to make sure that you have that improvement system built into the, uh, into the uh, cycle and you have the time available to have that improvement journey as well. And similarly, not everything that is worth doing can be easily measured. So that means that not every single thing that your business is doing or a function is doing needs to be captured in a KPI. That is not necessary. There are a lot of value adding activities like advisory services, consulting services, like for example, internal audit department. A lot of their work is depending of is advisory service, providing advice and consultancies, consulting to the other departments. 
That is something that cannot be measured. Does that mean that it should be removed from the department? When no APIs is to develop a culture, they drive a behavior towards focused areas of improvement. It is not a deciding factor of what a department should be doing or what a department should not be doing. So this is the aspect of about measurability. A lot of times uh, we come up with a good metric that we think is a good KPI for our business or a function to be uh, monitored and measured, but we come up with a way that is not really measurable. So for example, customer happiness. So customer happiness could be a key KPI for a business, but is that something measurable? If you say just customer happiness, it does not look like measurable. It could mean something very different to different people. So the way you make it measurable is, for example, you say level of custom, customer happiness. That means that there would be a survey, there would be a questions over there, there would be ratings over there. And from those surveys, you'll be coming up with a level of customer happiness. So, so if you use your KPIs and you use one of these words, either on the left-hand side, which are quantitative indicators, or on the right-hand side, which are, which are qualitative indicators, that would help you come up with a, a KPI, which is measurable, which is very specific. Okay. Now to give you example, we had somebody in uh, the participants list from the logistics and distribution industry. So this is pertaining to their uh, area as well. So you have on the left-hand side, a departmental level KPI that you can develop, which is distribution cost per unit. But if you want to drill it further down, if you have two different sections within that department, if you have got the transport section or you've got the planning section. So for planning section, they need to plan the units delivered per trip which would be actually about vehicle capacity utilization. So this is the process level KPI. This is the functional level KPI, and this is the departmental level KPI distribution cost per unit. So it also, again, on the other side, on the transport side, you have got the functional level KPI, which is transport cost per unit. Now the transport cost per unit is a function of kilometers per liter, which is the mileage that you're getting the fuel efficiency. Maintenance cost per kilometer, that is your maintenance efficiency and the vehicle efficiency. And then you have the kilometers per unit, which is your how the route planning aspect of it. So the, as you can see, the distribution cost per unit is one high le higher level KPI. And it can be further, the breakup of that high level KPI is built into transport costs and your uh, delivery per uh, trip. And then that's your vehicle your capacity utilization. And then you've got your fuel efficiency, you've got maintenance efficiency, you've got your route planning as well. So depending upon where you feel is the key area of focus for your uh, function, or depending upon the level that you are de developing the KPIs at. So if you're developing at the divisional level or the, or the departmental level, you can take the KPI as distribution cost per unit. Or if you feel know that you've got segregated teams uh, which are working on different areas and you want to be able to measure their performance separately, then you can start developing your functional and process level KPIs as well. Okay, another example that I want to give is of a service function, uh, which is for IT. So IT can measure as a, at a department with a, a downtime in hours or down, downtime in percentage. So it is the uh, av availability or non-availability of their core systems, whether it is network, whether it is internet connection or email system or software applications. So that downtime could be a function of three aspects, the help desk function, the purchase quality of the equipment, or the network management aspect of it. So if you drill down further on the functional side of it for help desk, it's the resolution time. And that resolution time is dependent upon the response time for the help desk team for unique cases. And you can also measure if there are repeat problems. So that means it was not fixed properly. So it's a repeat request. For purchase quality, you can have vendor quality and you can have brand related issues. That is there a particular brand of equipment that is causing you prob more problems. Uh, similarly, for network management, you can have issue identification time, how quickly it takes the IT department to identify the network problem, and then issue resolution time, how quickly it, they can, once identified, how quickly they can resolve that issue. So again, as you can see, even in the IT department, you can have a departmental level KPI, which is downtime per hours, downtime in hours or a percentage, 
or you can have drill it down to functional and process level KPIs to see where the issue is. Now, one more thing uh, to mention over here is that doesn't matter what level of KPIs you have set up. Even if you are monitoring your KPIs at the departmental level, which is downtime in hours, if this is one of the areas that you identify as an area for improvement, and this is the area which is lacking in performance and meeting the targets, then in order for you to come up with solutions, you will need to drill it down further to be able to identify where is the real issue or the root cause of the problem and where is the biggest uh, return on investment on in terms of improvement area. Is it the help desk aspect? Is it the quality of equipment or is it the network management? So even though you would be monitoring and measuring your KPIs at the departmental level, if this is one of the KPIs that is highlighted as an area for improvement, you will need to drill it down further to be able to identify the area which needs the most improvement. Okay, how are we doing on time? Okay, and, uh, some examples of balance of scorecard. So this is how you can distribute your KPIs in the functional level or even in the department level or the company level in terms of different scorecard categories. The reason why I want to show this is also to make sure or to identify and to showcase that it is not absolutely necessary that you are stuck with those, those four categories of, of balance scorecard only, which is financial, customer, internal process, and learning development. I've seen, uh, uh, we have developed uh, with clients with multiple different categories. We can have more than four categories. We can rename the categories to make it more uh, specific, make it more uh, customized for, for what makes, makes the most different for the, for the uh, function and for the business. So for example, for this area, they've got a service uh, uh, system, maintenance and service repair for white goods, for uh, kitchen appliances. So there, the KPIs were developed in terms of quality, timeliness, cost effectiveness, efficiency, revenue, and service factor. So this is the equivalent of customer. This, these are revenue and cost effective are your financial targets. Um, efficiency is your process, timeliness is your process, and quality is, an, uh, is your process as well, uh, and people related as well. So you can have multiple different ways you can develop your balance scorecard. Now, in order, to, in order to make sure that you have a scorecard system, what you need to do is you need to also assign weightages to each of the KPIs that you've identified and uh, adding up to the total of 100%. And then you can start monitoring and measuring. The advantage of doing it in this manner is that you are able to compare multiple different functions as well because IT would have very different KPIs versus finance versus procurement and supply chain, HR, et cetera. But how do, you, how do you compare which department is performing at what level and where do you need to focus more on? So if you have a percentage-based, weightage-based system, a balanced scorecard-based system, then you can identify, okay, at what percentage is the performance level of HR function? At what percentage is the operations department performing? At what percentage is the finance uh, department performing? And where do I need to focus more on as the head of the department, head of the business? This is one example. Another example is that you can see a finance function, which was uh, had procurement, finance, and uh, uh, insurance department along combined together with them. So these are descriptions of some of the KPIs that they came up with. They've got the weightage percentages adding up to a hundred, total of 100. And then what you do is you measure the data, capture the data and measure the score. So you show what the data is so that you can have, make sure that these measurement system is authentic. So you can build the authenticity of the uh, data gathering as well. And then you can show the score percentage that on a total in December, the score of this department was 86% out of 100 based upon their targets. And then they gradually improved to 91% by September. And you can graphically represent this in terms of trend analysis as well. So you can see the journey that they went through. They started at 68.6% and reached all the way to 91% within a span of about one and a half years. So this is one of the advantages of a de developing a good KPIs and balance scorecard based system that if you've got a good system and if you've got a good uh, uh, process develop in your company in order to uh, report, monitor, analyze, and measure them on a regular basis, you will start seeing that improvement immediately as well. Uh, because like uh, the, uh, the first quotation that we started the section with, that if you do not measure something, you cannot manage and improve it. 
So the moment you start developing those KPIs and measuring them, by virtue of just starting to measure them, you will start seeing some improvement immediately. In our experience, what we have seen is that within the first three months, you will start seeing 15% of the improvement right there. And then as you start have developing the habit of people in focusing towards those KPIs and measuring them and having that visibility of the numbers in front of them, they will start focusing more on the improvement areas as well. And then you can have specific special projects, specific initiatives taken for improvements too. And you will be grow, uh, continuously on the journey of improvement and continuously impacting your bottom line as well. That's it from my side in terms of the content. We are right on time for our question and answer session. So we will uh, hopefully uh, our team has helped me gather the questions that we have. And now you can unmute and ask uh, questions and raise your hands as well. Anybody has any questions that they want to go over? Um, is hi, this is um, I'm sorry, I, I don't see the sure. hand raise uh, um, uh, the, the option here. So if anybody else wants to go, I'll I'll wait. That's fine. Okay, so uh, sorry, Bhuban, I'll come back come back to you then. We've got Najib who has uh, raised his hand. Najib, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Yeah, I was saying basically that uh, to define KPI, first we must have a set job descriptions, right? And the processes need to be, to be agreed by all the departments. Uh, actually, actually the other way around. Because uh, it's the other way around. Uh, in order to define your KPIs, you don't necessarily need to have your JD. What you do need to have is you have need to have the company strategy and the company objectives. Once you have that, then you can start developing the functional level or the department level KPIs once you know what are your core areas of focus in terms of measurement for the KPIs, then you know what is the JD that you need in order to deliver that KPI. So for example, if you know that one of your core areas of focus in let's say IT department is your help desk function. So then you know what is the JD you job description you need and what kind of a person do you need in order to fulfill that role and, uh, and deliver on that KPI. So in my opinion, first comes the company's strategy, then comes the department level KPIs, and then you can have the right, uh, develop the right JD to deliver on that KPI. Okay, means we first uh, define the processes um, and then define KPIs and then we can make JDs accordingly. Correct. Again, uh, for the processes too, uh, process becomes a subset. So if you know what you, uh, like uh, Stephen Covey, one of my favorite authors says, you begin with the end in mind. So KPI will let you know with the target, where do you want to end up in? And then from that, you can define what is the process, what is the most efficient way for you to get there? So for example, what can happen is, and what is very practical and realistic is that you will define a KPI and you have your current processes and you will see that with the current process, you will never get there. You will net, never be able to achieve your KPI target. And that is where you redefine or re-engineer or improve your process. So having that KPI system and measurement system will identify that your current process is either not there at all or that process is not being efficient. So you need to fix that process. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now, Bhuvana, we can go for you. You had a question? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. There are two questions. One, uh, from what I understand, uh, the balance code card approach uh, has to be for the entire companies and it can't be for departments. Is that right? Uh, ideally speaking, yes. But my question always has been, and my pushback on that is that, uh, does that stop, for example, if at a company level you have not implemented KPIs and balance code card? And if you are the head of, let's say, HR department, does that stop HR department to develop their own KPIs and balance co card system? No. So no. you can be the lead, right? So you can be the uh, lead for the entire company and show them that this is the right way of doing it. So for example, uh, in my career, when I was in the corporate world, uh, our company had not developed KPIs and balance co card system. And I was uh, made in charge of the inventory management. 
and at the at that entire functional area nobody was using kps and balance scorecard system so i came in and i said no i need to be able to better manage this function and to be able to show where the process is i need to be able to know where the where the weaknesses are and where do i need to focus as the head of inventory management my time and my effort to improve so what i did was i immediately developed a balance scorecard kpi based system for the inventory management function only and i started monitoring the data and once i started monitoring the data that behavior in the entire inventory management team changed because they started realizing that their inputs or where their work was impacting the kpis and they started realigning themselves for the kpis and within a matter of 4 months we started improving our functional area tremendously and as a result within 6 months the level of performance we had shown in inventory management that had never been shown in the past 10 years of the company's history and everybody started being curious as to how this was being done and when we started seeing the kind of uh, uh, monthly uh, kpi monitoring reports we were preparing they started adopting that so so we became even though the company had not adopted this uh, this uh, philosophy one department started this journey and from that one department others started learning it and then to one and a half two years down the road the company started adopting it at the at the company wide level so yes you the short answer to your question is that yes ideally it should be across the company however my my experience and my my pushback in is is that even if your company does not have it at the company wide level if you are in a position of the of being a head of a department go ahead and do it at your department level okay so in that case your inventory management became a mini organization within the bigger organization and then okay. you could show the results absolutely and you know once you start showing results it's very difficult to argue against that right so you can have a philosophical argument and disagreement that should we have kps and balance scorecard based system should we spend time on this as it becomes a philosophical discussion so you can have different pieces different sides of the uh, arguments but as soon as you start seeing the numbers and the benefits it becomes very difficult to argue against that right uh, i have another question if i can go sure. okay uh, this question is very uh, re- very relevant to current times current times we see remote working or work from home and virtual teams and teams which are lean as in they they they, they form and they quickly disband after project project based teams now in such cases are monitoring kpis easy uh, or do they do we also have to change something in the way we monitor or uh, you know even identify kpis okay wonderful question so it, that's why in the beginning we talked about that there are two different ways a company organizes itself in order to achieve their objectives there are some special projects so you've got project teams and then there's your existing process existing systems so the kpis and balance scorecard is ideally designed for your existing systems and existing processes what you can have is you can have project targets and project level kpis separately for each project and as the project disbands those kpis get finished as well so they are very short term kpis but majority of the times your existing systems existing processes will be continuing they are not short term so you will have recruitment process for example in hr you will have continue to have help function in the it you will continue to have receivables function in the finance department so those existing processes will continue regardless of the business model regardless of whether you're working from home or not so those kpi should continue if you have a special initiative special project across functional team you can have a project level kpi separately which is designed for the duration of the project only Okay. Yeah, I get it. So it's basically a culture, uh, more than uh, anything financial or anything. It's more uh, culture has to be changed, the mindset has to be changed, and then this will be uh, this can. You be hit it right at this uh, the nail. It's not just even the culture; it's the behavior that drives the culture. Uh, it's the behavioral modification because having that visibility of the numbers in front of you, having that focus on the key KPIs. it's it drives behavior it changes people's behavior and that behavior in turn makes the culture and that's why i say that you know even if you are able to develop that behavior and culture at a department level even at your team level go ahead and do it it becomes contagious okay thank you so much you most welcome any other questions that we have is anybody else raising hand hmm. excuse me i'm sorry yes. i 
We don't have the raised hand uh, thing here, so uh, no problem. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, as I as I said in the beginning, uh, I work in the logistics industry, uh, and this balance scorecard approach. It's back in the day. Back in uh, I I we read about this. We used balance scorecards back in the day when I was in university. We studied it theoretically, used it in our student organization. But the challenge here is that um, even in logistics, I'm in the LTL, like less than truckload uh, logistics industry, right? So, so, so our processes are broken down at a very operational level with a lot of people involved in it who are not that, uh, uh, in terms of literacy, they're not that literate, right? So, so I, the, my challenge is a defi uh, defining uh, uh, those performance indicators, which uh, because ek to, uh, one defining them becomes difficult, but then gathering that sort of data that becomes cumbersome because at that level, at the execution level, uh, it's it's uh, it's all these things they are happening so so fast so so. The challenge is whether um, how to define uh, indicators which are not that minute, and then to come up with sort of technology, uh, the sort of technology that records that data as things happen. Uh, so, so there, there, there are two challenges, like spe specific to logistics. How do you uh, define uh, indicators at a minute level, and how do you actually record them? Wonderful question. So absolutely correct. A lot of uh, uh, industries and a lot of uh, companies will have these challenges. Uh, so what happens is that if you have got a, an operation which is very vast in terms of the number of people involved and the minute details of it, what I would recommend is instead of having those process level KPIs, take a helicopter view from the business owner point of view and develop your functional level KPIs, departmental level KPIs. So I think for you, for your specific industry, what I would recommend the middle ground, don't go for the departmental level KPIs, they'll be too high level. Don't go for the process level KPIs, they'll be too many. Go in the middle ground, go for the functional level KPIs. And again, in the functional level KPIs, you can first start with the laundry list of the key, uh, key functional areas. And then you, you start picking and choosing which are the ones that you really want to focus on. So start with that. Now, the second challenge is a bigger challenge, which requires uh, intervention from the IT side of it as well. Because uh, a lot of times I get asked this question that should we first look at what is measurable in our business? and then develop KPIs? Or should we first develop KPIs and then see how we can measure it? And my question always is that, uh, no, your IT system should not be the ones limiting your business. Your yeah. system should be the ones who should be driving your business. You should, right. The business should be driving the IT, right? So mm -hmm. you first determine what is the most important thing for your business? What needs to be measured? Once yeah. you've agreed on that, then you sit with the IT and the systems and see, okay, how can we improve our systems and the processes to make sure that we get this data? Now, that could be a two-step journey. First, but first step, you may need to gather it manually. A lot of paper-based documents, a lot of uh, different areas to gather the information. But then as you start learning where the pieces of information sit, then you can start automating a lot of the processes. And then you can start building reports and uh, system-based uh, reports, which can automatically capture this data for you. Because the ideal side of it is that in the ideal scenario, the perfect way is that you have a live monitoring of KPI. You don't have to wait for a month end and somebody to generate a report. It should be available in a dashboard on a live basis. Every day you should be able to know where do you stand today. Yeah, exactly. That's the ideal goal that we want to reach at. Yeah. That's that's the challenge because most of the IT companies that I've been going to in the past year, what they recommend is that you know you deploy a system which, in a way, operates in itself, not along with the operation, right? So so the data data generally they suggest is that the data would be captured after the execution has happened, even with the lack of couple of Correct. hours, but. I keep telling them is that quality control should be a part of the process, not absolutely a process, right? Absolutely. Uh, 
but i am i haven't been able to get through to a company which 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 could you know build that for me or incorporate it into their existing system but sure. otherwise so you have two challenges so first challenge is is defining that and that one is an easier challenge because you can always hire an outside consultant who can sit with you and you know you he can help you develop those key kpis the second challenge is the data capture uh, so there are uh, services available for that as well they, they where people can come in and look at uh, where are the ways and how you can automate some of the process to capture the data uh, automatically as well yeah so there needs to be a cost benefit analysis done at that yeah because in in our industry it's it's not being done like when i go to other companies and talk to them i realize that especially in the ltl sector it's not being done but uh, I, I don't know if uh, LTL is less than truckload. It's yes, not yes. Is right? their uh, utilization capacity? Yeah. So, so in the LTL sector, sector, there are very few companies that operate in the LTL sector, and then uh, with them, they're so small that they, probably, I don't know, but they don't see that kind of a benefit in it, which which uh, really has me stuck here, because I feel that this is such a powerful model. But it it needs to be accompanied with a certain sort of technology because um, at the execution level the resource isn't uh, because it's so spread out and so vast that you can't really uh, trust the data even if it is captured okay. manually you can't really say that you know it was uh, it is the the capture is correct across correct. boards right absolutely right absolutely right but but any generally, other questions yes. Uh, thank you. Yes, Dinesh, you want to say? Yeah, uh, one question, right? Uh, how, what's the strategy, right, uh, to enforce the KPIs? Like, what, what, what would you suggest for a, a smaller company, which is a startup? So, would it, like the strategy to uh, enforce the KPIs, for example, let's say, uh, will it be for the management or for the all of the team, or will it be what would be a good approach? Okay, so if I understand your question, you've got a small a startup company and you want to know what is the way to make sure that these KPIs once developed actually get enforced and uh, the benefit actually comes in and that's where that's a very good question and that's where a lot of trick lies as well that uh, defining the kpis and having the balance scorecard is not going to be enough it's just the beginning of the journey you need to make sure that you have got a review mechanism in place so for example at the top management level there is a depending upon the level of your kpis depending upon the criticality of the data and the business uh, you can do a monthly or at, at the at the latest quarterly monitoring of those KPIs. And so therefore, so in that sense, what will happen is that there's a there is a monthly or a quarterly meeting always set up in the calendars. It's there as a routine system where every department comes in, presents their KPI and balance scorecard information, and whichever KPIs are not meeting the target, they present a plan of how what is their plan of making sure that they get the improvement done and meet the targets. So that is the way. That is the uh, reporting mechanism that you need to develop as a process, as a system, as a routine in your company to make sure that everybody keeps the focus on the KPIs, everybody measures them, monitors them, and is held accountable on them. So the accountability aspect is the way you make sure that the KPIs gets enforced. Thank you, Zaid. Thank you. You most Thank welcome. you for the great session. Yeah. Uh, before everyone leaves, I do want to take that photo because it's quite late, I understand, especially for the people running from uh, Pakistan or India or other places. So let me see if I am able to open. Oh, yeah, it works. Okay, can you unshare your screen as well? And can I ask everyone who's comfortable sure. to switch on your video, fix your hair, and let's take a nice uh, group photo. And there's one person, Mark, he, he's our colleague, so I can say this, but his photo looks like he's here, but he's really not.
Okay, everybody ready? We need to say one, two, three, balance go card. One, <laughs> two, three, balance go card. card. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, any other final questions before, before we close out? Thank Very you, good. everyone, for joining in and uh, listening to me very patiently. And thank you so much for your participation and your wonderful questions. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so Zed. Much. Thank you, Varun. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good to see you, Nasir. Thank you. I recognized you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.